So if we look now, bouncing back and forth from the metaphysical to the physical, the microscope to this other part of ourselves, I'm one, let me become many, wisdom from the Upanishads. So if this is a depiction of the oneness, what are the many? We've got plants, flowers, critters, this is my dog Magic, always have to bring him in on the picture. One of those times in Seattle when it actually snowed in town. There are levels of reality, dimensions and resonance. So we're going to look at some of the dimensions from quiet to healing. We want to look at what resonance means and how we achieve the resonance of vibrant health and of vitality. Here's an old picture of me and you. We're all born of stardust. In fact, 90% of every atom and molecule in you was formed in stardust. The other 10% is hydrogen and helium that was formed in the Big Bang. There's nothing in you that's new. The body you arrived in as a baby is all recycled. Not a single molecule was new. And as you sit here, every molecule, every atom in you came from stardust. You are stardust. That's why you're so wonky, right? We are the most amazing recycling system you could imagine. So how does the stardust come together? How does it make one of us? When I did my doctorate at Penn State in biophysics, the major professor said, the universe is a harmonic oscillator. I thought that was kind of a cool idea, but I didn't really understand it until much later. So there's oscillation, there's frequency, there's movement everywhere in the universe except at absolute zero. Then it's harmonic is a very interesting thing, that it's not dissonant, it's not destroying things, it is harmonic. So if you have a guitar string and you play it, there's one harmonic and there's the formula for it. The second one forms a pattern, the third one, the fourth, the fifth. And because it has a unique frequency, it sounds like a guitar string. If you play the note on a flute, it has a different frequency, so you get a different note. But this is the basis of all of what's going on in the atoms inside of you. The harmonics, the oscillation, the movement. So you're wiggling around inside all the time. There's parts of you that work by wiggling, by the way. The melanin that's in your skin that prevents a lot of cytotoxic effects on your body and skin. That big molecule called melanin absorbs light and it detoxifies the bad effects of light by forming phonons, which wiggle their movement inside of you. Amazing, simple process. So if we look now at the resonance of consciousness and resonance of health, I want to tell you a few stories. Here's a human eye. Isn't that a beautiful one? Don't you wish you had a lavender eye? Wow. So if we look at the eye, and then we look at a diagrammable eye, the lens sits here. That lens with the electron microscope looks like this. It's exquisitely beautiful. These are individual cells of the lens of the eye. Each one is long and flat and wraps all the way around the lens. And each of those lens cells transmits light. It transmits light Let's go back. Here's one single cell. We're going to look down at the top of it now at its features. These cells touch each other and connect through these little fingers on either side, and then they touch each other top to bottom with various projections. So here's where one projection fits in. Here's another one that's going up, and this is side to side. Exquisitely beautiful. So what happens in a cataract? This is work I published. These are cataracts in fish. Here's the normal lens.
lens cell, here's the lens cell that has a cataract. There's a protein inside these cells called alpha crystal. It's a protein that is smooth and its molecules slide across each other and they transmit light completely and fully so that we see. When there's damage, those proteins cross link. They form clumps and that captures light and that's when vision becomes cloudy and you have a cataract. When we take the overall picture, here's the eye, I can't see so well, and then begin to move it down at a cellular level, what's going on inside? We have an ability to touch for healing that we don't otherwise. Or so I've been led in my work. So here's the lens in its great beauty. Here is the spirit of energy and healing how do we apply it? How do we make that link between these two worlds? What is that interface all about? There's a sense of appreciation and awareness, which is a chapter, one of the chapters in my new book called Resonance, that allows us to reach deeply in our body for healing, for health. Very important quality. So, we return to the interface. The first step that I work with is the step of clearing. What I found is if energy moves through a body and there's a lot of blockage, nothing much happens, stuff just hangs up on it. And so the first thing is, how do we clear? What do sweeps of energy feel like and look like so that they clear us of blockage? It may be blockage from I'm in the uterus, maybe blockage from some shock, some trauma. One of my favorite stories with that is a man who came to me who had fallen playing soccer. He'd broken his ankle, and his ankle had healed, but only partially. He had a lot of bone spurs and tremendous pain, and could barely walk, and he was, in, he was barely 30 years old. And so as I started working on him, having him on my treatment table, started running energy to feel where the blockages were, all of a sudden, his leg, because we pulled his pant leg up and taken his sock off, his leg turned ghostly white, running with sweat. He had a classic shock response, still located just in the lower part of his leg. It wasn't anywhere else in his body. So the job here was to clear the blockage from the trauma. And how do you do that? You just go back to the original event, grab a hold of it, and you clear it. There's probably more to it than that. We'll talk about that in the workshop coming up later this week. Immediately after that blockage and that trauma was released, his leg becomes pink and not sweaty. And what's the long-term effect of this? All of the bone spurs were restored by his body, put back in balance, and his ankle worked perfectly well, and he went back to playing soccer. And then he sent all of his rest of his family to me. So there's something about this blockage business of finding where we're stuck. Sometimes it comes from other lifetimes. Sometimes it comes from the collective consciousness. Sometimes it comes from our net. Our, um, our history. Sometimes it comes from the events that have happened five years ago, three minutes ago, 